Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a flip through of an altered book. As always, I'm going to go through the book, show the pages, and talk about the collage and mixed media techniques that I have used throughout. If you like altered books and vintage books and paper ephemera, art journals, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have a lot of them. Now, usually I would alter the cover itself. I would do some collage here, but this is called the Cathedral Psalter with Chance. And even though it's very subtle and one color, it's got this celestial looking sun and stars all across the front. And I just didn't want to cover that up. So it's kind of dark, but super cool. Here I started off this page with some handwritten, a handwritten letter that I rough tore and drew all the way across both pages. Although I've covered up most of this one, uh, this was a frontispiece with an extra li libris, and it is from 1898. It would have been given as a Sunday school present for good conduct and regular something with prayers. It's very pretty. It's got the scroll work. And over here I have, this is contemporary. This flower came from a book called Mr. Marshall's flower book. Mr. Marshall did botanical illustrations in the 1600s and I got this coffee table book with the reproductions and I use it a lot. And this is just a green woodpecker. I like that guy. Here I had, I put down as my background, my canvas, a handwritten leak, uh, it, it, it is a letter, but it's uh, from a lawyer's office from 1871. I do sell a lot of handwritten ephemera. If you're interested, there's a link to that below this video and you can see what you think. I put this down and then the binding decided to be imperfect on me. So I had to mend that before I could go further with the collage layout. And I did that with a tea bag. They are surprisingly resilient. And rather than try to disguise the fact that I have mended this with a tea bag, I've just sort of leaned into it as part of the layout. She's from a book of illustrations of engravings, actually, uh, from 1872. And I really like the way that she seems to be using her parasol to kind of, uh, they're not happy with each other. These are some mighty angry looking hummingbirds, if I must say. And I, I think something's going to happen here. This page started with a vintage French, French ad from a, a magazine that I have from 1911. And again, the binding acted up. So here I used some washi tape that I had that has some old timey style print that I think made a nice contrast with this old timey style print. This was from a gardening book. It was an older book, so the illustrations were actually, the photos were in black and white, but it's so dramatic. I love that, especially since it really complements this, this lady. She's from a different French ad. And look at that headpiece, will you? That's a lot of hat. Here the background is a handwritten letter that I got at a flea market in, in Portugal, in Lisbon. The paper was very, very uh, fine, so much so that when I glued it down, it went transparent and you can actually see the text on the other side of the paper. It's very subtle. These are not the originals. I rarely use reproductions, but I, I do have the original. A picture of these Pirettes and Piro, and I can't bring myself to cut it up. And I cut up everything. So printed that up and I put them there. 
Here we have um, a background that is made from a page of British wildflowers. Now, I love what you can do with these. They're great in collage, for backgrounds, for embellishing. They're, they're just so beautiful. And I have a website post that has six different pages of these wildflowers. They're free. The scans are free. You can grab them and use them in your own work. And again, there's a link in the text below this video. So go get them. Here is a page from a field guide of butterflies. And inside this pocket is a hand embroidered postcard. These were a thing in the 19 teens around the time of the first world war when there were few jobs for women and uh, embroidering these cards for sale was a way of keeping the home fires going. You can see it is actually a postcard and there's a message written on the back to Olive from Reuben. Oh, and by the way, these are called silks. So if you ever are at a postage show, you can ask for silks. And over here we have a carte de visite. This is a small, small card. And um, she has a lot of attitude and also um, a great coat there. I don't know if she's angry or if that's a wry smile. Hmm. Over here, what happened here? This is, uh, I do like this page, but it has a story. I started out by using a stencil with a very, very bright green. And I put that pattern all over the two pages that was going to be the, that were going to be the layout. And they just really made too much of themselves. The green stencil was overwhelming. So I decided to cover it up with this transparent paper. And this is uh, by Tim Holtz. I'm not sure they make it anymore. And now you can still see the stenciling, but that's brought it way down so that it's very subtle. But it's still there, and in its own subtle way, it's, I like the way that this, the green from the, the stencil underneath is picking up the green in her gown. Over here, I made some pockets. I've just cut a, a page from a, a butterfly guide diagonally, and glued that down on three sides. And inside, I have a vintage postcard. This is from Gloucester Cathedral, where I was two weeks ago. And uh, I love this sepia so much, and it's very matte, that I didn't really want to mess with it too much. So the only thing I did was add this, this butterfly. And I, I like that it looks like he is in the cathedral. But again, also look at how the colors are picking up her colors here and this color here. That helps the whole layout hold together. Instead of page, page, you have one canvas. In this second pocket, it's also a butterfly wing. And I have, this is a vintage French holy card. And also in this little pocket is a calling card. I think those are dogwoods. Uh, are they dogwoods? And then you open it up and there's a message. It's in German because I bought this in Switzerland, but it is a beautiful little card, which also has a handwritten message. Here is an ad that was in the back of another book, and it's an ad for a book. It is a book for women written by a woman, a boon to maidens, wives, mothers. 
next to the Bible, the best book of the age. So no pressure then. Read it. I don't know if she's read it, but she is from 1855 and I... That's that's a lot of uh, fur below there. Over here, this is a card that used to have a uh, photograph in it here. It would have come from the photographers like this. I don't know what happened to the photo, but in there I have put now uh, another carte de visite of two children with button boots. And this is also, oh, it's not Swiss, it's German, okay. On this page, I started out with a handwritten French invoice. And this is from 1832. I love that it still has this stamp here. And I love that this stamp, even though it is very subtle, has the same colors that these wings have and that this mottled breast has. Yes, it is another green woodpecker. He looks like he's saying something and she looks like she's ignoring him or dum dum dum, I can't hear you. She is from the girl's own paper and that is a magazine from, let's see, this was 1881. Look at those feathers. Here I've got, uh, you can actually see the original page underneath with a little bit of sheet music showing that it was a Psalter. Um, Psalms with some music so that you could use this in church. Got a fragment of a handwritten signature here from 1871. These roses are not all that old. They're from a gardening book but they were just so big and dramatic. I really wanted to use them. And this lady is from an old postcard and she also has a little basket of flowers. So that goes very nicely. I also kind of think that they might be sneaking up on her, but not in a bad way. Finally, for this end paper, uh, I, there was a lot of foxing already here, and I didn't really want to cover that up because it, it just gives some patina. So I did add, though, this, this page from a French prayer book. And on top of that, I added some crows. Or they might be ravens. I'm sure someone's going to let me know in the comments if I got it wrong. So ravens or crows but they go very well with this lady who has this, this black velvet dress. And she is poised on another card from a Sunday school uh, present and uh, also beautiful scroll work. Okay, if you like vintage paper and altered books, please subscribe to my online newsletter. It goes out monthly and it is filled with free scans of vintage paper that you can use in your own work. It also has art tutorials and uh, a free giveaway every month, a drawing and a little fashion, a little history. It's, it's really fun. So please join me. You can do that with the link below this video. If you can't find it, let me know. We'll sort it out. If you'd like to see larger photos of of any of these pages, or maybe even by the book. There's a link to this post as well in the text. And that'll take you there. Okay, until next week, happy making.